ECDC On Air, the podcast of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Keeping up to date with European epidemiology. Hello and welcome to ECDC On Air. I'm your host, Nicholas, and on the 18th of November, we are holding the annual European Antibiotic Awareness Day, which puts a spotlight on issues concerning antibiotic resistance. So today I have with me uh, Liselot Diaz Högberg, uh, who is one of ECDC's experts on antimicrobial resistance. Lisa Lott, it's, it's good to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. Can you start off by explaining what antibiotic resistance is? So maybe we could start with uh, talking about what antibiotics are then. So antibiotics are medicines used to treat infections caused by bacteria. And they work by either killing the bacteria or making it difficult for them to multiply. But sometimes the bacteria can have specific resistance mechanisms, meaning that they will continue to multiply and grow even in the presence of an antibiotic. And they can acquire this resistance mechanism either through mutations or by sharing genetic material encoding for resistance with each other. So the development of antibiotic resistance, it's a natural thing. It's evolution. But it is unfortunately accelerated by the misuse and overuse of antibiotics um, contributing to the selection of resistant bacteria. And important to, to note as well is that poor infection prevention and control is also important because that will allow the resistant bacteria to spread both in the community and in healthcare settings. So how much of a problem would you then say that antibiotic resistance poses now? Well, antibiotic resistance is considered to be one of the biggest threats to public health today, globally, but also in Europe. And treating infections due to resistant bacteria is challenging. There might be delays in getting the right treatment to patients, which could result in complications, including death. Infections caused by resistant bacteria may require more care, so longer hospital stays as well as the need for alternative and, and more expensive antibiotics, which might have more side effects. And what we see now is the emergence of bacteria that are resistant to last-line antibiotics, such as the carbapenems. And when these last-line treatments are no longer effective, it is extremely difficult, or in some cases, it's impossible to treat these patients. But I would also like to stress that the problem is not only restricted to the direct burden of bacterial infectious diseases that we see today, but also the fact that many aspects of modern healthcare rely on the effectiveness of working antibiotics. So without them, medical interventions that we take for granted today, uh, including immunocompromised patients or interventions increasing the risk for bacterial complications, um, that will be at stake. Just to give you some examples, uh, cancer chemotherapy, intensive care, organ transplants, and so on. We started using antibiotics quite recently in our healthcare history. I think it was just about 80 years ago. How did antibiotic resistance become such a pressing health concern in a relatively short period of time? Yeah, you're right. So the availability of penicillin towards the end of the 1940s, it, it truly revolutionized healthcare. Um, and during these 80 years that we had antibiotics available now, they have saved countless of lives. And as I mentioned, they have also served as a protective umbrella for the development of, of various medical interventions. And what has happened now is a result of misuse of a precious resource that has fast forwarded an, a natural process. So resistance development, it, it comes as no surprise. Um, the risk was known already when antibiotics were, were first brought to market. And um, actually Alexander Fleming, who, who won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of penicillin, he warned about this. Um, he said that this drug would be a revolution. It would be overused and bacteria would become resistant to it. But maybe we didn't understand how big the problem would become and how both misuse of antibiotics and poor infection prevention and control have uh, escalated the problem to the situation that we have today. So you would say that the fact that we have this level of resistance now, it's due to 
misuse and poor practices when it comes to infection control and prevention? Absolutely. So all type of antibiotic use is, of course, uh, selecting for antibiotic-resistant bacteria. But the overuse has definitely uh, speeded up the process. I can also add that I think during the early days, there was also trust that new antibiotics would continue to be brought to market as the old ones stopped working. But this has proven to be difficult. And uh, during the last decades, very few new antibiotics groups have been introduced. And uh, new antibiotics are often modifications of existing antibiotics. So resistance will develop very fast. So the medicine cabinet is becoming kind of empty. And um, the tragedy is that we had this knowledge for a long time, but uh, we have failed to fully address the problem. And if we look a little bit more at the current situation, and I know that ECDC is is working continuously on on monitoring resistance levels and consumption, and and we also have um, estimated the number of deaths in the EU EA due to antimicrobial resistance. Can you tell us a bit more about this, about the current situation? In our latest data from the European Antimicrobial Resistance Surveillance Network, EARSnet, we see that there are high percentage of resistance to last line antibiotics, such as carbapenems, in several countries. And we also see that this percentage is increasing overall at EU level for several important bacteria. When we are looking at the actual number of cases with infections caused by resistant bacteria, the most extreme increase that we see is in carbapenem resistant Acinetobacter where the number of uh, bloodstream infections has doubled in 2021 compared to what it was at 2018-2019. And this is really a concern because acinetobacter infections are often associated with healthcare-associated infections in intensive care units, and they are notoriously difficult to eradicate once established in the healthcare environment. And also the number of deaths annually, uh, what figure do we have now? On that. So the number of deaths are increasing. Uh, we are just about to publish a study with updated estimates of the burden of antibiotic resistance in the EU EA. And we see significantly increasing trends in the estimated number of infections and attributable death for almost all bacterium antibiotic resistance combinations that we have under surveillance. And based on 2020 data, we now estimate more than 35,000 people uh, will die from antibiotic-resistant infections in the EU EA each year. And this increasing number of deaths, is that then that's a direct result of the resistance levels increasing? Yes, it is. Um, as I mentioned, we especially see an increase in resistance to carbapenems, not only for Acinetobacter, but also for other bacteria that are common causes of healthcare associated infections such as Klebsiella pneumonia and resistance to these type of lost line treatment has a great impact on health and survival. So just to give some example for carbapenem resistant Klebsiella pneumonia and Acinetobacter, the number of attributable deaths increased by approximately 50% between 2016 and 2020. This paints a quite dark picture. Is there any uh, positive news, though? Any light at the end of the tunnel, or is it just uh, doom and gloom? No, of course it's not. Um, we should remember that although resistance has increased in the EU over the years, we still have several countries uh, with very low resistance levels. And the challenge ahead for these countries will, of course, be to maintain this favorable situation. Um, but all settings, also high resistance settings, needs to work on reducing the emergence and spread of bacteria. What is positive is that we already have most of the knowledge needed on what needs to be done. Remember, the major drivers behind antibiotic resistance is inappropriate antibiotic use and poor infection prevention and control. And the good news is that addressing these risk factors have shown to be very effective they can be achieved at a relatively low price in most countries. And the gains in terms of life saved and cost to healthcare systems, uh, that can be substantial. Antibiotic consumption, can you just explain a bit more? Why is it important to keep that at low levels? So when it comes to one of the main drivers of resistance, antibiotic consumption, we are publishing new data from the European Antimicrobial Consumption Network, ESACnet, and 
there we see significantly decreasing trends in consumption, both in the community and the hospital sectors during the last 10 years. And this is a very positive indication of antibiotics in general being more prudently used in the EU. But unfortunately, uh, we also see that at the same time, there are large increases in the consumption of more last line antibiotics in hospitals. And is there a difference between the European countries in terms of how well they are doing in terms of prudent use? Just as we see large geographical differences for antimicrobial resistance, we see corresponding differences in antimicrobial consumption between the European countries. So in general, we usually see lower consumption in the northwestern parts of the EU and higher levels of consumption in the southern southeastern parts. So that's interesting to see. Can we take a little bit more of a closer look at what people can do? And and, uh, if we start off with patients, what can patients do to ensure that uh, antibiotics remain effective? Ultimately, ensuring that antibiotics are prudently uh, used, that's everyone's responsibility. And we all need to help out in keeping antibiotics effective for future generations. So this means that it's important to know when it is appropriate to take an antibiotic and how to take antibiotics responsibly. And my general feeling is that the public is becoming more aware of antibiotic resistance and the importance of prudent antibiotic use. But there are still some misconceptions out there. And one of them that we might need to remind ourselves of is that antibiotics are only effective against bacteria. They cannot kill viruses or help you to recover from a viral infection. And this is important for us to remember now in times of influenza and and COVID-19. You should also follow the instructions from your prescriber. So it's important to only take antibiotics on the advice of your doctor in the prescribed dose and for the recommended duration. And uh, doctors and other healthcare professionals, what should they do? Well, when antibiotics are needed, prescribers should follow evidence-based guidelines and, when possible, prescribe an antibiotic that is specific to the infection and avoid broad-spectrum antibiotics when possible. If we focus on the larger group of healthcare professionals, also including uh, those working in nursing homes and long-term care facilities, uh, good infection prevention and control practices, that's a must. And it all starts with hand hygiene. Uh, We know that over 70% of the health burden of antimicrobial resistance in the EU EA is due to healthcare-associated infections. And we estimate that half of these could be prevented through adequate infection prevention and control measures. And ECDC works a lot on providing guidance to uh, national governments in terms of their policy. What uh, should be done at policymaking level? It is clear that there is a need for concerted action also at policymaking levels. And, and policymakers should support efforts to improve infection prevention and control antimicrobial stewardship and ensure that there is adequate microbiological capacity available. Today, most countries in the EU have national action plans against antimicrobial resistance, although we know that there might still be challenges when it comes to the funding and the implementation of these plans. And without high-level commitment and budget, making sustainable changes will be difficult. It is also clear that we need to support research and development to bring new antibiotics or other novel solutions to the market. Can you tell us uh, just a bit more about the European Antibiotic Awareness Day, or EAD, as it's called? Mm -hmm. So the European Antibiotic Awareness Day, that's a European health initiative coordinated here at ECDC. And it's held every year on the 18th of November. The goal is to bring awareness to the issue and to promote actions to keep antibiotics working. When it started in 2008, it was a small initiative, providing a platform for national campaigns, but it has now grown uh, through collaboration with WHO Europe and other partners across Europe and internationally. And I think it's, it's very important to acknowledge the growing problem of antibiotic resistance and recognizing that raising awareness uh, about the need for prudent use of antibiotics, it's a very important step in in curbing antibiotic resistance. Okay, uh, that's all the questions I have for this episode. So thank you, Liz, a lot for coming here to ECDC On Air and shedding some more light on this important issue. Thank you for inviting me.
We hope you enjoyed this episode of ECDC on Air. For more information about ECDC and its work on antimicrobial resistance, please visit ecdc.europa.eu or follow us on social media. You can also find out more about the European Antibiotic Awareness Day by visiting antibiotic.ecdc.europa.eu.